All right, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while, but what I wanted to do was just make a quick, quick, eh, for me, nothing's quick. This will probably be a relatively quick video, though, in, in, in my standards, of a project I'm working on here just to kind of show. Now, I'm doing this handheld with my phone, so eh, it might be a little bit wobbly. What this is, is a set, an AB set, Reading FA1 by MTH. I've had this for a long, long time. Uh, I don't think it ever really ran that well. It's, you know, MTH, which is, you know, one of those companies that tries to be super sophisticated and just can't make a nice, you know, just give me a freaking quality locomotive with a good DCC system, uh, relatively good sound that runs. I'll take it. So this was sitting in my closet for probably 10 years. And I said, you know what? Let me pull it out. I'm in the mood for a project I can work on. And the goal of this project, it's a down and dirty, quick and easy. Don't spend any money on the project. You've got to do it with what you already have. Uh, you know, DCC wise, detail part wise, um, etc etc so you're not going to go out and buy stuff for this you're just going to do it if you're going to make a part make it or if it's a detail you don't have skip it um because it's not that big a deal because these are actually actually looking at the mth model i will say they're not that bad now i know if i was serious uh rapido's coming out with uh i think with their sets relatively soon so i could of course you know, broken down and bought in a bought in and purchased a pair of an AB set or an AA set or whatever I wanted from Rapido, but you know they're pricey, and yeah, I get it. They're they'd have a lot more detail. Rapido does a really good job, no doubt about it. But I'm like, you know what? I want to get these two running just to have them, just to see if I can do it. Like I said, not spending any money. Uh, not that I haven't spent money on the things I'm going to use. <laughs> Might as well utilize them, though, right? So, I mean, overall, I, I don't think the models are that bad. Is the nose contour perfect, like Rapido claims theirs is? I don't know. It's good enough. Uh, you know, overall, the, the decaling looks pretty good. The weather, the uh, lettering looks pretty good. Comparing it to some prototype photos, it, it's really not that bad. Now, I'm going to do a couple things to it, detail-wise, or other, some I might skip, but... All right, so I'm going to just move the fan over here. So here's my list of items that I nerdished, uh, looking at prototype photos, uh, s several Reading books I have on uh, Reading diesel locomotives. All right, so a couple things. The grabs above the windshield need to be added for, for my era. You know, I model kind of mid-57 into 58-ish. Not real seriously serious about that, but, you know, roughly. Uh, the grabs over by the number boards, which are, let me just kind of zoom over here. The grabs I'm talking about, uh, I need myself a pointer. Maybe this little purple guy will work. All right, so you need grabs, okay, above the windshield, which I think I have and I can add. There's some grabs that are here above the number boards. Um, I think a note I have, oh, another thing I noticed that's interesting is the windshield wipers on the unit were mounted at the top going down. Look in the photographs of the Reading units, the windshield wipers are mounted at the bottom and go up. So I pulled them out, I'm going to flip them around and, and attach them to the bottom. Not a big deal, I don't think anyone would really care about that, but I noticed it. So I said, you know what? That's kind of a fun thing. I'll do I'll do that. And you can see I pulled the horns off. I didn't really like the horns that came with it. One of them I broke, unfortunately. So what I had to do was add some putty. I'm letting that set. I'm going to sand it up a little bit, touch it up, and drill a new hole. This one's got a hole drilled already for it. I have the horns for that. I'm going to use a, a Wabco. Uh, where's the horn? I got them somewhere. Well, actually, the horns are sitting right there. I got them painted. I think there are details west. Uh, typical early first generation cab type unit, single, single blower, you know, single uh, horn. So I got that. All right. So 
what else is up this way? Uh, so I talked about the wipers from below. The nose MU connections. Yeah, I, I could model that because apparently starting around 1956-ish, the Reading did add uh, MU capability to align the MU compatibility with the rest of their EMD, or with the EMD locomotives. And then goes added to the nose. So I'm thinking about that one. Grabs each side of the nose door. Uh, they're there. They're actually there. Uh, speed cables. Now there's, there's actually, interestingly, on these, I don't know if all Alco FAs are like this, but there's one on the engineer side on the front truck, front axle, so number one axle. There's one on the fireman's side on the front truck, rear axle, so the number two axle. And that I found by looking through, let me go, dun, 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 just back over here, just to base this in a little bit of fact. All right, get some light. So there's one, oh, and of course you can't, one here on this truck on the engineer's side, number one axle. There's also something, it's right here on what I'll call the fireman's side, because not the conductor side back then, uh, on the number two axle. So I did add those. I, I had those. It's close enough. It's not exact. I think what I actually have are probably more like EMD, but yeah, whatever. So here they are. There are those trucks. And there, there they are. They're ready to rock and roll. This is the uh, engineer side, number one axle. This is going to be the opposite side of, of this. So that's the number two axle on the fireman side. So that's where they go. So uh, the Redding also added air cooling coils um, on the fuel tank on the engineer side, from what I can tell. I'm probably not going to do that. Just not that big a deal. Uh, the front pilot train line and MU cables. Again, the, the front train line is actually there. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that. MTH had that on there. If I want to add some MU cables, I could always do that. Uh, decals. Now, on the front of these units, the Reading has the maintenance location. And on these units was EA for Erie Avenue. And then safety is, it's not job one. Safety is, or something like that. It's a decal that, that's uh, on the front pilot. So I need to look and see. I don't know if I have any Reading decals uh, to add. Again, not a huge deal. Many people won't even notice them. Um, but I'll, I'll see if I, if I have the decals, I can always add them on there to the front of the A unit. Wind deflectors and the rear view mirror, yep, they were added. They will go, I think I have those from KV Models. The, the ones that look pretty good. Looks like on the Redding, they put them right here. Sometimes you see them here at an angle, but the Redding picture is they're, they're right here. So I have that, so I, I can do that. So, so those are the details I'm going to do. Again, I do have them all torn apart. I pulled apart all the uh, MTH electronics. In fact, here's the B unit back together. Trucks were all torn apart. You can see, and I painted all the side frames. Um, I did have to pull out the connectors and, and, and solder on new leads because the ones that came off, off the MTH uh, version were too short. So the truck has been they've all been totally, totally torn down. And these will go back inside here. Before they go back on, I put a little drop of Never Stall in there since I have them all the way apart. Might as well do it. Then I use some Nano Oil and I will, uh, you know, put a couple of drops, just a little bit, and kind of run the gears around and everything like that. Get the trucks all back together. Um, so the trucks are pretty much all done. Here's the rear of the A unit. Getting ready to go, all put back together, new leads on it. Uh, wheels are all completely cleaned, uh, very well cleaned, both with a real nice polishing uh, sand that I use and with my uh, same thing as a track cleaner. I figured if I got them torn apart, might as well do a really, really good job of cleaning everything. And then put it back together like that. And then these I put back inside the frame here. Uh, for the DCC sound on these, I'm going to use TCS, probably AKMB. I have a bunch of these motherboards and uh, decoders. Uh, wow, wow sound diesel, wow 121 diesels. So these will go and they're going to fit nicely just like that. There's some other accoutrements that were here with the MTH model. I'm just ripping it out and getting rid of it. And I'll put this in here, probably put some double-sided tape right on the motor. 
and then mount the, oh, sorry, handheld, handheld warning. Put that there. Solder everything up. Uh, the speaker I'm going to use, I normally tend to like to use scale sound speakers, but I don't have any for this. But I do have, from a while ago, some of the TCS 28 millimeter round um, high bass or something like that. Deep bass speakers. I got those, so I'll use those. I got two of them. Perfect. One in the A, one in the B. So those are the speakers I'm going to use. They fit right in there. It'd be perfect. Just and They actually come with a little adhesive on them. So bang, put it in. Maybe a quick piece of cap ton over it and then good to go. So in the, that's the B unit. I'm not going to worry about a backup light. I thought about doing it. I certainly could run a light off, of, you know, an LED off of this. But I'm like, eh, whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm certainly not going to worry about a backup light on the back of the A unit, which I imagine they had. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. So that's that. So again, the uh, fuel tank's been taken off, painted, weathered up a little bit with my uh, Vallejo uh, Panzer Gray and German Field Gray. So that's pretty much ready to go back on. Uh, like I said, the B unit's done. So you can see how that looks, at least on the underframe. Now, of course, I still have to weather the the shell, the bodies themselves. And they're not going to be totally beat up. Uh, the reading seemed to look like, for the most part, they took pretty good care of their stuff. Although I do like beat up weathering. But um, once I get the horns on, everything back, I'll, I'll mask the, uh, the porthole and the, and the windshield and go ahead and get these weathered up. A little bit of light weathering, you know, some road grime along the, on the bottom, etc., etc. Um, so the next thing is to get the DCC installed on this. Get these, uh, get this truck back together for the A unit. Get it back together looking like that. And then determine if I'm actually going to use, I have some other motherboards I could use. I'll probably just use these since I have them. doesn't really matter what motherboard you use. So I'll get that going. Get this, And then it's just a matter of, you know, getting the speaker in and getting it soldered up. Not hard at all. So it's going to be actually a pretty quick project. I just started this yesterday. You know, I spent some time yesterday sneaking away from work a little bit since it was a quiet day with the, the Friday before the 4th of July holiday here in the United States. So I was able to get down and get things some things painted up, get, you know, get things um, dry amber for the day. I also did FYI. I did these MTH come with these stupid couplers. That are supposed to work somehow electronically. It's, it's silly. Again, gimmicky stuff. What I had to do, there was two little nubs sticking up. So I, I filed all this smooth. I have the KD couplers already selected. So I know what couplers I'm using here. In between, I have the coupler here. That's going to work on the end of the B unit. I just need to verify what I'm going to use here on the a unit to come through the pilot and whatnot and give you enough room to if you needed a couple but everything else is all set uh, picked out ready to go in fact they're all sitting right here stored in a box with the hardware ready to be installed so that's all done so let's get back to work it shouldn't be take very long what am i at i'm at 13 minutes and 30 holy crap i talked longer than i thought so anyway so that's uh this little project let me get working on this get it done um, and then we'll get this uh, this set of units over on the layout. All right, more to come, guys. Let me get some work done here. All right, one of the things I like to do, I have the uh, A unit back together here with the uh, trucks on and everything, with the proper speed cables or whatever kind of monitoring cables on the lead truck. I realize it's dark here, but this is just to show what I like to verify, I'm pretty sure yellow is the positive. So when this gets positive voltage, the unit will go forward. I like to have it set up so when I connect it to the the motherboard and then, you know, the decoder's on, that when you are in the forward direction, the locomotive goes forward. Otherwise, I'll swap the motor leads. So, I mean, yeah, I know you can do that in JMRI or with a CV. You can change the you know, direction of travel to be reversed. I don't prefer to do it that way. I want the locomotive to be set up that when it's forward, it goes forward. And now I have to change a CV to get it that way. So I just want to verify. And what I have here is my little voltage at 1.2 volts. It won't run. Not enough voltage 
So I'm just going to crank it up a little bit. And if I'm right, because I have the positive to the yellow, it should move forward when I get enough. Let's see. 1.3, 1.4. Okay, good. Okay, good. So it moves forward. So I know the yellow is the positive. And then I'm going to watch my end of track here. So then I can uh, connect it up properly to the motherboard. Okay, that's just the thing I like to do. So again, this is pretty much ready to go, ready to get back together. So uh, another uh, update as we uh, make some more progress. All right, so continuing along here, you can see on the A unit, I have the cab in with a rather bizarre looking crew, but <laughs> good enough. And what I did on the light board in the front here, which has the headlight, and then two LEDs for the number boards slash marker lights. Um, what I decided to do, I wanted to have the marker lights separate on their own function. Now, in order to do that, at least from what I could tell, the way the board was configured, I, I couldn't do it because the ground wire or the, you know, the negative return from all the LEDs, the headlight, and the two LEDs for the number boards, marker lights, all came back as one ground wire, which is okay, but that just means if I had, say I had them all hooked up to the headlight, everything would have come on when I turned the headlight on. I didn't want that. I want to be able to control the number boards and the lights separately. I was able to figure that out because luckily, way back in time, I mapped out what's what. You know, what was where, what went to where. So what I decided to do to accomplish what I wanted to is basically on the board, I cut the cathode of the two LEDs for the marker lights, uh, number board. So I cut it there, cut it there, bent that up, bent that up, tinned it, brought a new wire in, and then had two leads, you know, soldered on two little smaller leads. You can see there, it's the, the green one. So I have a single green coming back that now goes to the cathode on each of these two LEDs. So the headlight uh, return is the purple wire, which will be actually the white wire if you're using NMRA standards for the front headlight. The green wire I'll bring back to a different function to control the two other LEDs. So if this all works, let me just put the camera here. Then what I'm going to do is I have my handy dandy LED tester back there. So the purple wire should be the headlight. Okay, there we go. So the purple's just, just the headlight. And then the green wire should be the two. Yeah, okay, there we go. So that function then will turn on the number boards slash marker lights. Uh, independently of the normal, you know, F0 for the headlight. Okay, so that's the one mod I had to make to the MTH uh, light board. And now this is pretty much ready to get the decoder in, or the motherboard in, everything soldered up. Test it again, of course, and then uh, get the bodies weathered and get them uh, together and on the layout. All right, more to follow. Alrighty, got the B unit done actually. It's pretty much ready to be tested. Need to put the decoder on it and take over the layout, fire it up, <clears throat> make sure it runs okay, sounds okay. The direction's correct on uh, three, and then I'll bring it back and of course program it you know, later on. Uh, one thing I did do was just in case I left enough slack in the motor leads, <laughs> just in case I got to swap them side to side, um, but I think it should be correct. And that when it goes forward, it'll go this way. So it's the, the, I can't point. That's the forward direction. And then the way I mounted the board, I got a piece of Kapton just to kind of help snug it. And also a piece of Kapton over the TCS WOW speaker. And again, that speaker that I'm using is the TCS 28 millimeter high bass 4 watt WOW speaker. Uh, SK, SKU number 1694. Um, hopefully it sounds good. I had them. 
Again, part of the goal of this project is to not spend money or at least use money I've already spent. <laughs> it's not that I haven't spent the money on this stuff. And the way I'm mounting the motherboards, here's the A unit getting ready for its turn. Get everything's all pretty much set here. I put a piece of Gorilla Tape here on top of the motor. Double-sided Gorilla Tape works very, very well. There's my cut-up, hacked-up roll that I use for various sizes. And then I found a piece of masonite, about one eighth inch, that uh, I just use as a spacer. Otherwise, you got to use a whole bunch of layers of the tape, which you can do. Oh, sorry about that. So, um, but this way, I'll just stick that right there. Bada boom. Put another piece of the tape on it, and then set the motherboard on it like that. And everything should fit. Then we'll start getting things soldered up. So that's how we're going to do the motherboard mounting. So we're getting there. All right. So I'm going to take the uh, B unit over and test it. Make sure it's all good to go. And then it's just a matter of, you know, for that particular unit, doing the uh, weathering on the show. All right. Here we are on the noisy layout. I tested the B unit. It was good. So I soldered up the A unit. And I'm just going to make sure it's okay. And there's a lot of noise over here because I'll just do a quick, quick pan. I got GP39-2 set. I got... Two Pensy sets, F7s and FP7s. I got an F3 ABA set, an Erie F7 ABA set, <laughs> three Pensy Jeeps. And these are all recently done. These are all recent, you know, conversions. So, all right, so enough jabber. So, back to the specimen at hand. So, I got it programmed on uh, number three. And let's see, F0 should be the headlight. All right. And hopefully it moves forward. Good, good. Okay. That's encouraging. Now, oh, now, to test the other lights, I have to go into light mode, which I think is... Let me just put this phone so I can kind of set it here. Okay, good enough. I think I did F8 twice. Light mode active. Okay, light mode. And it should be six. Should be. Yeah, all right. So six. That works. Let me go back to. Uh... Sound mode active. All right, back to sound mode. I don't really know if I like this speaker. Um, we'll see. Uh, if I really, really don't like it. It wouldn't be a big deal to go back to the bench and just take the shell off and, and buy one of the scale sound speakers, the 28 millimeter round to fit in there. But whatever, he's on summer break now, so we'll wait and see. So at least it is encouraging and it seems to work okay. And it runs. And now, of course, it has to be programmed and then consisted. And let's see, I'm probably going to have to change the I crank her up and then kill the throttle now. Oh yeah, way too much momentum. <laughs> that is a bunch of momentum on it. All right, but it runs. Okay, let's uh, bring it back. Now, there's no backup light, but we'll make sure he runs in the voice. Yep, good, good, good. Okay. Now the sounds are wrong, that's probably a EMD prime mover, not the Alco 251, but that's all fixable. At least, hey, it works. Okay. And then, you can always tell it's got to keep alive, which is fun, because you, uh, it's going to show you how long it stays on. I'll set this here. And then I'm turning off the layout power right now. Okay, layout's off. Everything still kind of gurgles away for a little bit. So like I said, uh, go back to the bench. I'm not going to get this thing wrapped up. Really, all I got, oh, sound goes first. 
and then a light will flicker a little bit. Here, all the other engines start to turn off. And then eventually, it's about 10, 15 seconds or so, roughly, just till the LED is going to die. Well, not die, but go out. Okay, so now let's get it back to the bench. Let's get um, a little bit of touch-up paint. Maybe uh, I can see a little bit down here I might need on the cables and whatnot. And then get the bodies weathered up a little bit. And uh, be uh, ready to go on a layout. Okay, more to come. Alrighty, moving along here. Um, let's see, all the electronics I said are done. What I did uh, now, or recently, was work on the A unit a little bit. I did, as you can see, I painted the handrails yellow. And I did decide to go ahead and add, let me get a pointer here. I added, oh, of course it's buttery. I added that one there. I added one here above the windshield. Okay, these are the new horns that are on. And I think they're right. You know, what I'm not sure of is, are they lined up here at the back so they're all set like this? Or would this be mounted up here? Now, these were the original mounting holes. And that's the way the original, at least that's the way MTH put them in. So, I don't know if it's right or not, but that's the way they're going to be on this unit. Okay, uh, everything's uh, masked off, ready to, for airbrushing to do some weathering. Painted that one yellow. It looks like this is yellow, this is yellow, although a very, very dirty color. You, it's hard to tell. From what I can see, the ones here on top of the windshield, at least early on, and I'm talking like the 57, 58-ish, didn't seem to be yellow. I could be wrong. You know, I might look around and find another color photo that shows that they are indeed. But I'll go back and I'll go ahead and add them and make them yellow. So that's pretty much what I've done here. And then on the B unit, it was just, again, doing some of the painting of the handrails. Some of them came off, which is okay. And then I just painted them so they're drying up over here. Then I'll get them back on. Now for the ones that are on, that stayed on, that were like super glued on, I didn't want to break them. What I did was, because some of them are laying right against the body, but I got a sheet of paper, a real thin sheet of paper, and cut it to fit, and I put it behind it. Then I went ahead and just, you know, very gently painted the handrails. These are far enough away. Oops, help me with the camera. Here and here that I could get them, again, carefully. It's not the greatest paint. If I go in close, they probably look pretty, pretty ugly. But again, once you get back... And once I put, you know, a little bit of coat of uh, weathering on it, they're going to look like they were yellow, which is all I wanted to get to. So that's where we are here, pretty much ready now. Oh, I did go ahead and drill. I didn't put them in yet. I'm going to wait till I'm done. Of course, you can't see. And you won't be able to see it. But I did drill a hole down here for new, for the wipers to come in from the bottom side. And the wipers themselves, man, I'm afraid I'm like, I don't want to breathe on these or sneeze or <laughs> or anything. Are sitting over here. Now the ones that I'm using are going to be these two. They are from KV Models. They just looked a little bit better. That's one of the original ones from MTH. The other one, I don't know where it is. It, bing, it went somewhere. It's it's in the nether world. I'll never see it again. So that's why I went ahead and, and got these two. Uh, from K I have a bunch of KV models uh, etched uh, detail parts. Very, very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and use those when the time comes to get them. Whoop, quick zoom. Ah, making everybody seasick. So these are getting getting close here. Uh, like I said, I need to let the paint set up, get all the handrails back on. Uh, everything is masked. I use some Humbrol mask all on all the windows and the Headlights, number boards, just a matter of giving them a little bit of a weathering coat. Uh, not too serious, a little bit. You know, a little typical, just to subdue them a little bit. A little bit of road grime along the bottom in here. Because these are, you know, getting kind of beat up by the time, by the late 50s. Uh, they still ran them. I think they ran them in the early 60s when they traded them in on uh, Alco 
C424s. So, getting close. All right. Well, let me stop shaking the camera here. Again, I'm just using my cell phone, so I apologize for that. But uh, these are getting close, and this video is going to be a lot longer than I thought it's going to be. <laughs> All right, next, the weathering. Uh, getting them together, getting the Katie's on them. Getting them in a JMRI and program, the consisted, and then uh, away we go on the layout. Ah, real quick, one thing I forgot is I did add the the cabs, the, the um, wind deflectors slash rear view mirrors that they're ready and added. So they're there again. They're from KB Models. So they were very, very carefully added as well. Let's so we get some light on that there. Ah. That's the, uh, I probably can't really see if I can focus on it. Anyway, that's, uh, that's them. So they're on there, both sides here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I didn't paint them. Um, they look like they might be painted black, but I kind of like the way they look uh, like this on the, on the model. So I'm probably just going to leave them be for the, well, at least for the time being, until someone convinces me to change it. So, okay, we'll be back when we get some more work done. Nice looking unit, not too bad. It's not going to be rapido good, but it's going to be good. You know, it's going to be all right. I'm, I'm proud of myself for the work so far. <laughs> okay, here we go. Pretty much these are done. Ready for the layout. I got them uh, into JMRI and got them think pretty well programmed. I take them over and run them and make sure uh, they are consistent together. Might have to adjust the uh, forward and or reverse trim. Depends how they run together when I get them over there, but we'll see. So these are the, you know, the light's not the greatest here at the bench. Um, a and the B unit. I did, like I said, I weathered them up. I mean, they're kind of late in their career, so they're a little bit more grungy than uh, a nice new pristine unit. A little bit of metal slag there on the, on the roof. The new horns. Probably the biggest visual thing uh, compared to the, uh, as they came from MTH. And MTH did sell these as, as the as-delivered scheme. So it, it would have been pretty correct for that. So I can't really fault MTH at all for the scheme of it. But, uh, you know, painting those handrails yellow really does kind of, I think it looks kind of cool. So that's been done. And some of them are a little bit subdued because of the weathering. But if you go back to our initial list, let me zoom over this way. Doo -doo -doo. So, what did we get done? The grabs above the windshield, yes, they're in. The grabs over by the number boards, yes, they're in. Uh, the wiper has been moved to below the windshield, yes. Uh, the nose MU connection, I didn't do that. I didn't add that little box for it. Uh, just to, probably don't have the skill to do that. I just didn't want to ruin a model I'm pretty fond of right now. Uh, grabs on each side of the nose door. Uh, grabs on each side. Nose door. Oh yeah, they're already there. They're, they're already on. I did not add a door latch or handle, uh, which should be there. Um, did do the, the two speed cables are both done on the engineer side and the fireman side. I did not do the train air cooling coils on the sides of the fuel tanks. Uh, I did not worry about the front pilot train lines and MU cables because they're actually there. What's there is fine for me. I did find in a micro scale Redding cab unit decal set uh, for the front, the EA for Erie Avenue for the maintenance base. And it's not safety is job one, it's safety is your job. That is stencil, that's stencil painted on the prototype on the engineer side bottom uh, near the front pilot. I had to move it a little bit because the decals is, is actually bigger than the uh, prototype from what I can tell from the picture. So I had to make it where it would fit. So, but I, I can show that. And then the wind deflector slash rear view mirror. Yes, those were added. Those are KB models that are added. So that's, uh, that, oh, that's what was done on the MTH set. And of course, it's got the TCS wow sound, the uh, wow 121 diesel. Um, I did use the TCS high bass 
speaker. Uh, we'll see how that sounds when they get over the little layout and get running. I could always go back and put a scale sounds system speaker in if I really dislike it, but let, let's, you know, worry about that later. Uh, so again, here's the unit. Oh, it does have new horns on it. Uh, I think I've been getting knocked around a little bit as I, oops, I'm sorry, as I move my telephone around. So you can see we have the, where's my little pointer? Hey, here it is. So here's the one on the fireman's side, second axle. It's got this handrail added here, the windshield, above the windshield handrails. The wipers are lowered, you know, below, not from above. And then the KV models, wind deflectors slash rear view mirrors are on there as well. And of course, as you can see on the very, very front here, it got a little bit chewed up and kind of buried in weather, but that's the EA uh, for the Erie Avenue you know, maintenance base. And then as I turn it to the front, as it already has the two handrails on the left of the nose door, uh, which was added uh, by the Reading. Should have a door handle there, but I didn't didn't do that. Oh, woe is me. And then over on this side, really the only thing, same stuff on this side as well, but it does have that safety is your job there at the bottom. And on the prototype, it was more right to the left of this grab over here, but it would have looked too long. So I just, I just, I moved it up. It's not, that's not prototypically correct where it is, but you know, okay. A, a real Reading guy would know that. Most people aren't even going to notice this, <laughs> but uh, that's where that decal is. And they came out of a micro scale decals set for the Reading, which set is, I happen to have it handy right here. 87-120, uh, is a set. That was an old set that I had. See, that's the set, and it did have those decals in there, so I probably won't use much more of this set, but I did have those, so I said, oh, what the heck. I got them. Might as well put them on. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Ready to go. Again, the other side is pretty much the same, and the B unit didn't really do much of anything, other than you know, doing the handrails to get them yellow as well. Um, yeah, the coupler is weathered it up and whatnot, but that's that's about it. So the B unit's pretty much a stock B unit, except for the handrails being painted. Okay, so there's the set. Now let's get, get all in on the layout, and hopefully they run good together. All right, one more quick segment showing them running, and then we'll get this video posted. Okay, so over here at the layout, and this is what I what I do, and I am not very sophisticated kind of a bull in the china shop with this stuff. The, um, this set's been consisted. So what I'll do is I'll set them together, but keep them apart and run them as a consist and just see how, how, how closely speed matched they are. And then what I do, if one, say for example, the B unit runs faster or slower, what I'll do is I'll adjust the trim on, it depends how they go, but anyway, but I'll just, you know, using the trim, which is two CV values, to either slow down or speed up the units so they tend to run as close as I can get them um, to be in the same speed. And that's all I do. I, mean, I know there's much more you can do, and I'm sure, you know, people do all kinds of stuff to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and days and weeks, you know, getting these programmed uh, down to the gnat's ass and then making sure they're perfect and they, they're, they're speed match within one tie per hour. Not me. If they're close, and as long as they're not going not to be pulling knuckles and whatnot, I'm happy. Uh, so, for example, so these two are sitting here. I'm going to go ahead and try to do this with my hand holding the phone. And they should be in reverse. So I'll kind of look and see if they stay... Usually, visually, you can tell. Eh, it's not too bad. The A unit might be a little bit faster. But it does seem to be closing that gap a little bit. Let's see if I go faster. Sometimes, when you, the faster you go, they, they even out a little bit. No, not in this case. 
Well, it's not. Yeah, that, that A unit's definitely faster because it's catching up to the B unit. So, okay, so go ahead and stop that there. See how the momentum is on both of them? Not bad. Okay. All right, so let's go the other way. <laughs> Just see how they run in the forward direction. Now, before I do that, it's going to be a little bit more space. Okay, so we'll get going. And I try to try to do it at try to do that. I try to do it at the speed I'm going to normally, or I hope the operators, <laughs> you know, normally run the units. Not dead slow, not super fast. Yeah, that A unit is definitely faster. I think it's. Uh, does he not not as bad in the forward direction as in the reverse direction? I'm trying to keep it. On the side here, so we can see if that gap is getting. Yeah, it, it, it is a little bit. Right, so, so what I'm going to do, you can just double check it. That's a good speed for. Uh, that's a, a little bit fast for mainline running, but at least they run nice. not too bad at that speed it is catching i can tell so the a unit is a little bit faster so i want to probably the best thing to do is okay so in the reverse direction i want to slow the a unit and then what i do is i need to read this this basically tells you basically above the cv values are then this is for tcs wow sound so for the reverse motor trim is CV95 and 128 is kind of, 128 is the default. So if I lower one, um, CV95 below 128, it'll slow it down. And correspondingly, if I would increase it, it would speed it up. So I'm going to try to adjust CV95 on the A unit. You right there, buddy. You know, down a lot, of, and it's kind of like a, you just kind of kind of guess. But at least for the TCS ones, if I read it in here, the resolution, the precision of the adjustment is four. So for every four, you add or subtract to CV95 in this case, it will adjust the speed by one degree of difference. I have no idea what that means. I'm not calibrated to one degree, so I just try it. You know, in this case, I'll try it at uh, maybe 4, 8, 12, see what it does. Uh, too much, go back to 8 or not enough, go to 16. And uh, Anyway, so let me, uh, I won't drag you through that crap. Let me uh, adjust that CV95 down a little bit and try it again. Okay, we're back. And I think I got it. I made a mistake last time. What I was doing, and here's one of the little glitches with DCC. This unit, the A unit, how do I explain it? When the Reading bought these, they numbered this 300A, and this is actually road number 300B. You know, they're not different road numbers. So, you can't put alphanumeric, as far as I'm aware, as a address. So, I made this one 3001 and this one, 3002, really for being 301, 302. But you got to put a four digit number in there, right? I can't put 300A, because I don't think so, in as the actual ID of this locomotive. Now, when I was, when I was showing you last time, when I was changing CB95, I was using 300. It didn't change much. Well, no wonder, dumbass, because it's not 300. It's 3001. Well, I went back and I and I did it with 3001 and I changed CV95 and CV66 both to 100 to slow down the A unit. And right now, I think it's pretty darn good. Let me just go run it here a little bit. And we'll see, he says. And I'm trying to go the same hash mark on the, on the throttle.
see that's not I don't see it really creeping up on it and before I started boring you guys with a video I did actually run it the whole straight away here and it it seems pretty close again this is roughly the speed I hope to run or hope my operators run you know I don't like real loud sound units I don't like real fast trains you know this is the northeast corridor I like them to run slower take your time my layout isn't that big so the faster the you run you know it's like eh go slow and enjoy it so you know that looks pretty darn good I'm not going to sit here and count ties and or ties per feet and everything but okay you know what I'm happy with that all right so let's uh zoom back over here and you might be able to see if I kill the throttle. The momentum is about the same on both of them. All right, good. So now let's bring it forward. We're at the exact same spot on the throttle. Now, zoom over here. Let's see how close we are. And again, this is all I do. You know, once this is close enough, I'm like, I'm done. Couple it up and run, baby. I can't tell. Is it a hair quicker? Is it starting to pull away a, a tie every two feet or something? I don't. I don't know. Maybe a little bit. You know, maybe I could make this one 96. But you know, as long as you're not fighting too much, it isn't like the B unit's going to be dragging behind forever now again you know with the the motor inconsistencies at different speeds it could be different that's why i do it you know about here this is where i like to run them so if an operator gets it and starts going uh, all mario andretti on me i'll say slow down dude and then again we'll shut the throttle off now and they both that's not bad okay so now i'm gonna say good enough <laughs> Good enough for me. Should I get these together here? Oop. Couple them together. Yeah, they are really in there. I hope they go around the curve. And then now let's see if they tend to want to run together. I think they should be okay. Okay. Yeah, those speakers aren't that bad. Once I turn them down a little bit, maybe I'll leave them in there. Again, they're the TCS um, four watt high bass speakers, high bass. <laughs> they're not fish. Um, okay. They seem to be running pretty good together. I don't see them seem to be fighting each other. Or... Of course, I guess if I ever break a knuckle, then I'll know what's going on. Let me just try a quick shut off here and see if they. Not bad, just enough momentum. Again, I don't like a whole lot of momentum because most guys tend to operate with the throttle and slow things down. I know it's more realistic, but you know what? It's a, it's a model railroad. It's not a real engine. But Rob, you gotta make it run just like the real. No, I don't. I do not have to do that. I want it to run, so it's not a pain in the rear end. All right, anyway. I don't know why I'm going off on tangents. I'm going to be getting hungry. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit more. Make sure they don't fight each other. Yeah, they actually seem okay. Runs nice and quiet, so... Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. And again, the momentum is matched fairly well. Okay, here we go. So there it is, the Reading uh, MTH FA1. Reading 300A and 300B. Ready for pulling some freight on the layout. So that's how we do it here. Okay. Maybe to run around the curve and make sure it doesn't uh, I don't have an issue with that. 
because I could put longer KDs on here, you know, to separate this if I need to. I'll do it. I'm going to run it around the, uh, the my tightest radius and just see what it looks like. So, all right, I'll report back if there's any issues on that. All right, so we drove real quick over here by Wallace Junction. <laughs> and what we're going to do is I'm just going to run this on the inner curve, which is a 30 inch radius. And just, oh, and just kind of see how it looks. I ran it through the tunnel. It didn't derail or anything in the tunnel. So let's, uh, let's just run it and see how it looks coming around here. I do like this set. You know, I'm glad I detailed it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's Rapido. Um, I'm sure there are uh, FAs that are coming out going to be gorgeous, but, eh, you know, for something I had for free, so to speak. All right, let me just... Uh, let's see. Coming through the tight curve. Well, tighter curve. Okay. Doesn't appear to be doing anything too mischievous. Mm -hmm. Come on here. Yeah, sometimes they don't uh, notch up the same. I can try calibrating them. And I did try it before, calibrating a consist. And it didn't seem to work all that well, but whatever. Okay, so I don't think that's going to be too big an issue. And this is the tightest radius that these will run on. So I think we're okay. So let's see. Uh... Okay, you know, I like that set. I'm glad I decided to pull it out of its uh, isolation in the closet and get it on a layout. <laughs> Okay, I think it sounds all right. Bell's a little quiet. But... Okay, folks, well, that's it. So like I said, that is the MTH FA1 set. Reading scheme converted to TCS wow sound. How about them apples? All right. That's it. I know this, this last segment here was probably way long and boring for everybody, but eh, it's just what I do to, to get them speed matched, so to speak. It might be the, uh, again, the uh, bull in the china shop method, but they seem to be running pretty good together, so I'm happy. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching. If you uh, slug through all of this, <laughs> you're a saint. All right, more to come. I need to get some work done on the layout and do a, a real update, not just this DCC stuff. I got to get away from that and Get some work on the layout done. All right. Stop battling, Rob. All right. More to come, folks. Thanks for watching. Do appreciate it.